Hi, I'm the Space Quest Historian and welcome to a little update video for a video that I made quite some time ago and that everyone has probably already forgotten about. You may remember, but probably don't, that I once did a video called A Ninja Came to Town. Let's be honest, I backed this because I wanted me some ninja in my life and ninja I have. Now I just want a bit of a bigger ninja. But anyway, I will keep you updated as to the appearance of Ninja in my life. It was about how my other favorite game soundtrack that isn't Space Quest related was being crowdfunded and released and re-recorded by its original composer. That soundtrack is the soundtrack to The Last Ninja 2. The soundtrack is fantastic and I'll reiterate briefly why it is so fantastic. It rocks! It rocks like no other C64 soundtrack I've ever heard does. And it's not just piddling little 30 second loops like you'd expect with normal 8-bit games. This thing is a proper music album. And I'm talking about the original C64 version. A proper music album with tracks from 3 minutes to 7 minutes, minutes in length. It's, it's a beast. And it sounds so fantastic. It's all synth rock, uh, pumpy sort of stuff. Is my cat on the table? No, good. Because otherwise he's dead. Anyway, uh, so when Matt Gray crowdfunded the re-recording and re-release of the soundtrack back in 2014, uh, he promised that there would be a CD release, that was what my previous video was about, and a picture disc vinyl release. Now, six years later, I can finally say with some degree of satisfaction that what I assume to be the vinyl release has now arrived. So I'm assuming it contains at least something, maybe a fold-out calendar, but hopefully a vinyl record. Now, as, as viewers of my channel, uh, of the few unboxing videos I've done on my channel will uh, uh, attest to, I have a habit of breaking whatever implements I normally use to crack open these packages with. So for this procedure, I have chosen to use the most brittle of uh, brittle scissors, these little play toy scissors. I'm assuming these will be in 12 separate pieces by the time I'm done with this, but let's crack in. It says fragile. Not in my hands, it's not. Yes. <laughs> oh, now we come to the great opening. Yes, inside this very box is indeed what appears to be a vinyl record. Yes, hello, in nice seal as well. Now, uh, one of the reasons why we had to wait six magnificent years for this to be released. I, I did say that the six, C64 original was a music album unto itself with uh, pretty long tracks and such, and the re-recordings that he did uh, exceed what you can actually fit on a single vinyl. So he had to, uh, you know, pump up the jam, so to speak, and uh, release it on a double vinyl. So let's just gingerly break the seal here. Right, here we go. So it's a lovely gatefold. On the cover we have Mr. Ninja. Back with a Vengeance was the original subtitle for the game. Uh, it was cool in the 80s. And inside the lovely gatefold is, I've not, I haven't actually seen this, so I'm seeing this in the camera. These would appear to be the, uh, the different levels of the game laid out in a lovely Monopoly board style. I don't know, maybe you can like play a little like a board game thing uh, with this. Uh, but anyway, I'm not sure what the snake pattern is all about, but it is a lovely gatefold. And on the back is the track list uh, laid out with the uh, game's original uh, UI and the tracks in the original is completely illegible font. This always annoys me when 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 uh, when vinyl shippers do this. this is of course, no fault of Matt's uh, himself, but uh, they they sort of package them with the sleeve, so you, the vinyl record, record sort of drops out of the sleeve like that. And as as every vinyl collector know, you're supposed to store vinyls like this. But uh, in plain paper, white paper sleeves, we have the lovely Last Ninja 2 soundtrack on picture disc vinyl. Isn't that nice? This is of course side A. This is side B that has the actual track list on it. Now you may be wondering of course why is it a picture disc? 
because picture discs are uh, notoriously not as high fidelity or quality as a normal black or colored vinyl would be. Uh, you would have to ask Mr. Gray that. I, I would assume that it's because picture discs make for very pleasant display items. Also, that uh, if you're looking for the utmost in sound quality, uh, you would be listening to the CD version, which is a, a, a smite more transportable and will actually fit in your car's CD player. This will not. It does sort of beg to be put on the turntable and actually listened to. Ignore my son's bib. <laughs> Lovely. I have removed the bib. You cannot see the bib. I'm happy to report that sound is indeed coming out of this thing. Come along, sir. Yes. Well, this intro is going on a fair bit, uh, but as, as you can tell, he, he extended the tracks and some of them are hideously long. And it is now a double picture disc vinyl. The image on both discs is the same, which I can't say I'm disappointed with because it was originally supposed to be just a single vinyl disc. That is deliciously loud, isn't it? I mean, you could of course hope that with the fancy uh, double disc, you would have different images on disc one and disc two. This was not to be the case. Uh, but then again, we were not promised it would, so I can hardly fault anyone for that. Uh, I could also, if we were being a stickler, fault uh, someone for just including plain white paper sleeves. Um, because they do have a tendency to scratch records. Uh, but then again, most high-end records that I buy also come in these hideous plain paper sleeves that scratch up the records. It really is up to the vinyl collector themselves, their responsibility, I suppose, to buy anti-static PVC inner sleevey kind of things. And also, again, these are picture discs. They, they aren't actually meant to be played. Not very much anyway, because the, um, the sound quality will degrade drastically uh, after the first 10 or 20 plays, really. So I should probably stop this. Uh, but anyway, so they are display items more than anything else, and I do uh, indeed have the CD soundtrack uh, if I want to listen to this. But um, it's lovely. I am I'm very very happy that I now finally, after I'll I'll be I'll be kind and say five years because my wife did back this after the original Kickstarter. So it's not quite six years, but it is very close. Five years after the original backing, I now finally have. A ninja in 12-inch format in my house. Isn't he lovely? It, my ring light keeps coming into the... Go, go. There. There you go. Hello, ninja. Nice to meet you. I'm the Space Quest historian. Please like, subscribe, and do whatever you kids do. <laughs> you kids. You. You weird ninja kids. All right. That's enough of that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you around the chrono stream. Bye. Oh, epic fade out.